Hi, my name's Stuart and I'm from Remote Lock and today I'm going to show you how we install the ProLock Slimline Multi Smart Lock onto a UPVC door or it could be a timber door. Basically it's designed to work with lever up multi points, uh, slam multi points and the same principle would apply if you were installing with a, with, a, with a mortise latch. So the first thing we have to do is we need to test the compatibility to make sure that the multi-lock will retract the, um, the, the deadbolt and the latch fully. What we found is that sometimes if the mechanism is really old, the action of pulling down the lever doesn't retract the bolt fully. So we need, we need to make sure. So it's quite a simple test that we can do for that. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the, the handle set off the door. So I'll do that now. And I'll also remove the Euro cylinder. And what we're just gonna we're gonna leave the spindle in place. Now we take the, the, um, the keypad side and we're going to place it on here. If this handle is facing the wrong way, you insert a Phillips screwdriver, undo the screw and spin this 180 degrees and then tighten it back up. But for the test, we'll um, use it like this. First, so the first step is we just put the other handle back on. And just crank, crank it back like that so that it throws the deadbolts and the hooks. Now on the keypad, what we want to do, where the spindle goes in, there's a little arrow. We want it to face the opposite direction from the handle. Now what we're going to do is just locate the spindle, like so, and just hold this securely and try cranking the handle down in the normal way. We're going to check to make sure that these retract fully. So in this case, they've retracted fully, which means that this lock is compatible. What we found is you get some multi-points that will have a double spindle, um, and there are quite a few out there in the market. If you've got a double spindle, generally we found it, th this system won't work. So you would really need to either look at swapping, up, swapping out the, the multi-point. Okay, now we know that that's compatible, we can remove the spindle and we'll go to the next stage. Okay, next step is to mask up the door. I've taken the spindle out, so put the spindle, put the spindle back in. And then we want to apply masking tape to both sides of the door. Okay, now the important thing is we need to mark the position of the spindle. So make sure the spindle is not up or down, it's kind of pretty much level. And just with a pen, mark the spindle position on both sides of the door. So we know that's the spindle. Now we can, we can remove that. And the next step is we have to remove the multi-point and put it on the bench to check where we're going to drill, drill the new holes. So I'm going to um, remove the, the multi-point and we'll, and we'll come back in a second. Okay, with the multi-point in the bench, we can figure out where the holes need to go. Basically, the principle is that when you install the multi-point, the bottom fixing hole goes through the Euro cylinder, because we don't use the Euro cylinder, the spindle's through there. The top, the top fixing bolt comes through the top, and the cable comes in like so. 
So we need to create a new hole potentially for the cable and one for the fixing bolt. So what we do, we just remove this for now. With each lock there's a paper template. If we fold it along the vertical line, and then we offer, align the spindle with the spindle on our lock case, we can see this multi-point has got a, a section removed here, like a channel. Now all multi-points might be different. There might be a hole here, or a hole here, or or some other some other setup. But we need to figure out where we can get the, the cable and the, um, the fixing bolt. So the cable on the lock always comes down around about the bottom. So we want to basically make sure that our cable hole is there, and then our fixing bolt is, is above, like so. Not right up at the top, but down slightly. So what we then do is we then trans take this bit of paper and put it back on the door and then for drilling the holes. Okay, what we need to do is just mark up the centre line on the door. So this is a 35mm back set um, multi-point. It's actually from a company called Mako, their GTS. So what we'll do is we'll just draw a line like so. We'll do the same on the other side. I'll draw that in a minute. And then what we do is we offer up our template aligning with the spindle like so and then we transpose the two positions so that was the one for the cable and that was the one for the bolt so I'm just going to put a B there C there and then that's the spindle hole like so so we do the same on the other side mark it up in exactly the same way ready for drilling Okay, it's really important that we drill the, the, the correct size holes. So the, the spindle hole is quite big here already, but it needs to be 25 millimetres because on the lock there's a split pin and we can't have a split pin touching the, the plastic. So this needs to be drilled out a bit bigger. I'd recommend using a, a step drill for this. The cable hole also needs to be 25 millimetres because we need to stuff any excess cable back through into the, 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 the cavity of the plastic. So it's good to make this at least 25, even 30 mil. It makes life easier when we install the lock. And then the top hole for the bolt just needs a 10 mil hole. So we've marked up both sides. We will drill out these holes and we'll come back in a second. Okay, we've, we've drilled the holes. So the next step is to fit the, uh, the multi-point back in. Just make sure that it aligns. Okay. I won't fix all the screws for the purpose of the demo. Okay, and then now what we can do is remove the masking tape. Okay, the next step is to fit the spindle. Uh, the lock comes with different lengths of spindles. Uh, the one that's supplied is up to a maximum door thickness of 65 millimeters. The shorter one will do from doors from 35 onwards. So what you can do is just offer the spindle up and just check to see whether it's long enough. This one is not quite long enough. So what I've done, if your door is over 65 mil thick, this, one, this one's 70, it's just to get it, the spindle that was in the door previously, if it's long enough, drill, it, drill a hole in the end of it um, for the split pin and then just insert it in, in like so. And then we, we fit the split pin. So I'm gonna go off and fit the split pin and come back in a second. Okay, the lock is supplied with two of these threaded studs. And there's one little screw which you screw into the back like so. And this fits on the sliding part. So it just slips in like so. And if you just roughly hand tighten it to the position we we're expecting, that's around about, around about there. And then there's one goes on the bottom like so. We can tighten that one up because it's always in the right position. The good thing is 
because this goes through the euro cylinder hole, this will work with any multipoint that has 72, 85, or 92 millicenters. <coughs> with that on, like so, we'll, with this set up here. What to do now is just to offer it up. We want to check the alignment of the, um, the top bolt through this top hole. That's going on really well, so that's good. So we can, we can tighten this one up now. So, and then the next step is to fit the rubber gasket. It's really important you fit this rubber gasket, otherwise it'll affect the warranty and it, would, it stops rain water pen penetrating in behind the keypad. So I'm going to go ahead and fit these two, two rubber gaskets. Okay, we've fitted the rubber gasket. Um, it, it kind of clips into place. You might want to wrap some masking tape around it if it keeps falling back. Um, the most important part here, the biggest number of calls we get when the lock's installed and it doesn't work properly, is that that arrow that was on the spindle receptor must now be turned 180 degrees and face the direction of the handle. If you forget to do that, the lock will work in reverse and um, it will cause you no end of problems. So you must make sure that that little arrow is pointing towards the handle. The next step is just to locate this through the door, make sure the cable, locate the spindle, Make sure the cable goes all the way through the door. Like so. And then I often just use a bit of masking tape just to loosely, not too tight, hold it in place. Like so. Okay. Okay, this is what it should look like on the inside. Next step is take the little extension cable and plug this onto the cable, like so. Now what you need to do is just carefully just feed, feed it back, feed it back through into the hole, like so. And leave it like so, leave it like that. Next, take the spindle sleeve and fit the spindle sleeve over the spindle. Fit the rubber gasket to the inside handle and then feed the cable carefully through like so and then locate on the spindle like that. And again, maybe a little bit of masking tape just to help hold it in place. Now the lock is supplied with different length screws depending on, on door thickness. The screws there's four different screws. The longest one will work with a door up to about 70 millimeters in thickness. So you need to figure out which is the best screw to use. For the bottom one, it always needs to be the longest one. So just locate like so. Don't tighten it up all the way. And then this one here goes through the keypad. This one can be a little bit more fiddly. And then tighten them up. Make sure the lock is straight on, on both sides and tighten. Okay, won't tighten up fully. You can take the mask and take it off. This little cable plugs in in here, like so, and just sits, sits like that. Okay, and when you now pull the handle down on the inside, it will activate the, um, the spindle. Now we're ready for the batteries and to power it up. Okay, next step is to install four AA batteries. We don't supply these, so you will need to get some. Make sure to use good quality batteries. Batteries should last, on average use, um, over a year. When we put the battery in, we think the lock should talk to us. So we know it's got power and it's asking for us for the setup. The final step 
is to put back on the cover. I didn't actually show sure taking this cover off, but it just the cover is held on with a, a small, small screw like so. Okay, final step is to peel the cellophane off the keypad. There's a little bit of cellophane on here. We've taken this one off already, so I can't demonstrate it, but just peel that off to expose the keypad properly. And then finally, we want to test the, that it unlocks with a backup key. So as you can see, the key's got a kind of straight edge. That should head towards back to the door. It slides in underneath like, like so. At the moment, the handle doesn't do anything when I pull it down. I turn it 90 degrees and it should retract retract the latch and also throw the, the dead weight out. But even when the key's out and you pull the door shut, the, the spring latch won't work, but at any time you can crank the handle up to throw the dead bolts and you get the secure, the secure locking. So the next step is to download the TT Lock app from the relevant app store. In our instruction manual, I think it's on page five, we've got a QR code that we can scan. And we will install the app. Okay, with the app installed, we can start to um, program the lock. Um, when you first register for the TT Lock app, they do go through a bit of a security process where they'll send you um, uh, a security number. And it depends whether you get whether you sign up with use an email address or a mobile phone number. But just be aware of that. Once the um, you've got the um, the lock set up like so and the, the app installed. If you click on the three plus button, three horizontal bars up here, and click add lock, and then select door lock, and press next, and then any button on the keypad, the lock shows up pretty much instantaneously. So we click select plus. That tells us we've added the lock. We'll just leave it the name that it is there. You could give it any name, and we'll click OK. And that's the that's it that's it installed. If we could then go to the app and then click on that lock to unlock, we just press the unlock button Unlocked. like so, and it will auto lock after five seconds. You can change that setting in the software. Lock it again like so. If we want to set up a, a card, we can go in here and choose cards. Click Add Card, we'll just give it a random name, click Next, it connects to the lock, swipe, your card. swipe the card, input successful. input successful, that's it done. Then go back, now we can try the card, Unlocked. the card locks. Excellent. The app has lots of other functions and features. These fobs can be programmed from a desktop computer and there is some desktop software available as well so you don't have to use the app. And also, uh, we also have an integration with um, our remote lock software. So if you wanted to link this lock to Airbnb or loads of other channel managers, then, then you can do that also. Uh, we have a, a, an app manual that we can supply by email. Just email us for the app manual, which will go into all the details. But it's, it's more or less self-explanatory. Similar things, sorry, I should have mentioned, is with the fingerprint. You can set up fingerprints in exactly the same way by clicking on there. Push, pushing your fingerprint on and registering the fingerprint. And um, yeah, that just about covers it.